Welcome to Pandora, kiddos. Today I'm going to try decanting spray paint. If you already know what decanting is and you just want to see the methods, then skip to this time code. If you don't know what it is or why you might want to do it, then stick around. So what's the goal of decanting? We're going to take the paint from this can and we're going to put it into another vessel. So why would we want this paint in this bottle? Well, if you've got an airbrush, you can put this paint through it. And that's going to give you more control and it's going to allow for many thinner coats and a better finish. Also through an airbrush, you're going to reduce overspray, which means less waste. So if you've got expensive or hard to find paints, you'll get more out of it. And there's going to be less mess. Or maybe you've got a can with a clogged nozzle. Or maybe you just want your paint to take up less room on a shelf. So what's in a can of spray paint? You've got your can, you've got your nozzle, and this nozzle has a tube that runs down to suck up the paint. And you've got about, depending on the can, 11 or 12 ounces of paint in it. And the rest of it is full of propellant. I don't think you can see that on the camera, but that's propellant. So your paint is about two thirds to three quarters the volume of the can. That's about a soda pop can's worth of paint. And we want to get that paint out of the can and into these bottles. Now I've got two methods that I'm going to try. The first method is going to be puncturing a small hole somewhere in the top of the can, and that's going to allow all that propellant to escape. Afterwards, we can cut the top of the can off and just pour the paint into another vessel. The second method is simpler. We're simply going to spray the paint out of the can and we're going to catch it in one of these bottles. Here's what you're going to need for these methods. Number one, paint, obviously. Number two, empty bottles. I got these bottles off of Amazon. I'm kind of hoping that um, the solvents don't react with them, but we'll find out. You could also use glass bottles like mason jars or glass soda bottles or you can use cosmetic jars that are generally chemical resistant. Uh, you're going to need a well-ventilated area or a fume hood, gloves, a respirator with organic filters, goggles for safety, rags, always good to have around. You're going to need some kind of stir sticks, a warm water bath. All of these things are good to have around for both methods. For the first method, you're going to need some kind of poker to poke a hole in the can and you're going to need a cutter to cut off the top of the can, and then a funnel is probably a good idea on top of that. I don't have one of those, so I'm gonna run with it. For the second method, you're just going to need straws. First of all, don't shake this can. If you shake the can, you're gonna cover the walls with paint, and that's gonna leak out the hole that you poke. So leave it unshaken. All right, now we're gonna puncture a hole in the can, and we want that hole near the top. If you puncture it below the paint line, you're gonna spray all your paint out. I'm putting it in a warm water bath. That's going to save me a little bit of time later, and I'll explain why then. You wanna let this sit for, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. While it's hissing away, you can go do something else. All right, it's been a good five or 10 minutes. All the hissing has stopped, so we know we can safely cut the can open. utility knife is actually working pretty good. You don't need to remove it completely, just enough that you can make a little spout. Now we're just going to pour it out. There it goes. All right. Now if you want, with this method, you can get those marbles out and those will help you shake it later. This wasn't a full can. These are eight ounce bottles, and there would have been 11 ounces in here if it was full. Now you can't just close it up because there's still propellant dissolved in the liquid paint solution. So what we're gonna do is stir it. There we go, until that bubbling stops. Start carefully or it's going to bubble right over the lip. Now, according to the ideal gas law, as pressure decreases, volume remains the same, temperature will also decrease. The colder a liquid is, 
the more gas can be dissolved in it. So by putting it in a warm water bath, the liquid already released a lot of that gaseous propellant. So that saved us a little bit of time on stirring here, but it's not necessary. Now this is pretty much ready to be put through an airbrush. Uh, if needed, you can reduce it further with some lacquer thinner. I'm going to leave the cap off for another hour or so just to make sure that all of that propellant is out. Otherwise, the next time you open the paint, it's going to release that propellant all at once. And you really don't want that. But the last thing I want to do is label my paint. So now looking down at the top of the jar, I'll be able to see what's in there. So that's one method. The benefits to this method are less mess, as long as you don't spill the paint, getting it into the bottle, and less waste. You can get every last drop out of this can because that gas tube isn't going to reach the very corners of it. So if it's an expensive paint, you're gonna be left with, you know, an ounce or so in the bottom. With this method, you can also get the marble out of the can, so that'll help you shake that paint up later it's not stuck in the corner. For the second method, we're just going to spray the paint through this straw into the bottle. And that's going to catch the paint and it should pretty much just drip out of the straw and into the bottle. I've opened up my garage door for ventilation and you're definitely going to want your respirator for this one because you have to stand right by it as it's coming out of the can. The straw is getting cold. I need an insulator. I still used the warm water bath to heat up the can because when it felt like it was running low, but there was still paint in there, I would just warm that up and then spray for another minute or so. It took a long time and uh, you, got, you just have to stand there the whole time and spray it. So not a big fan of that. That's a bit messy. So from here on out, it's just the same as the first method. You're gonna to wanna to carefully stir this, watching for bubbles. Looks like there's not as much propellant dissolved in this. That must've come out during the decanting. So that's good. Uh, it's really cold. The straw got freezing cold, so you're definitely going to want to insulate that. If you wanted to, you could attach the straw to the can with some epoxy putty or modeling clay or Sculpey or something, and then your fingers won't freeze to the straw. The benefit to this method is that you can decant just a little bit. It's a pretty simple setup and you can spray it directly into the bottle or directly into the paint pot of your airbrush. Look at that. See all that frost on the bottle? Thanks, science. Oh, crap. <laughs> 